find that family. I do not know what is better, looking out and seeing your beautiful faces or looking at the screen because it has such beautiful flowers on it. And then behind me are some of the prettiest flowers I've seen this spring. And you know, you moms are looking absolutely spectacular. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms who are here today and all of you who are viewing us online. I cannot tell you how wonderful a day it is for us here to celebrate our mothers and to welcome you at First United Methodist in Wyandotte. <clears throat> I am Pastor Anika, and it is such a great day to celebrate today. And let me tell you about our opportunities. May, of course, is still with us, and our mission is NOAA. It's back, our back lunch program has served the downtown Detroit community for over 40 years. It's more than just a lunch. The back lunch program is beginning of a relationship. The warm, safe space that is created where people are known by name can start a transformation. Offered Monday through Thursday, you can help us support our mission of the month by using your mission envelope or a pew envelope marked mission during the month of May. Our second is the Generation Gap. This is going to be on Friday, May 19th, and I'm sorry I'm not going to be here to participate this time, but it's this Friday coming up at 7 p.m. in our large group gathering to bridge the generation gap, and it's a game, and you know what that means. Robin is involved, and you must be there because I want to hear all about it. It begins at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, and we're going to find out which generation is the most knowledgeable. <laughs> the challenge is on, friends. We'll have snacks, which you know are the best in the town, to munch on and plenty of laughs to go around. And I'm only teasing you, but I'm also truthful. I have never had such good food. <laughs> Truly, this church has it. Amen, this church has it. So all of you Facebook friends and online friends, be here. Be here at 7 p.m., 6.30 if you want to get a good seat. Number three is our Child Hunger Run Walk Ride, ro Walk Ride, sponsored by the Michigan United Methodist Church Conference. We have seven walkers and one canine who have signed up for our walk, our 5K on June 3rd. You may sponsor any one of the walkers by giving them a donation towards their walk. Our walkers are Julie Taylor, Heather, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Lycos, Robin Rupert, and Barbara Tricathan, thank you, and Jennifer Kimmett, Penny Schuyler, and Susan Hayhurst. Thank you all for volunteering, and we want to make sure we sponsor them because if we're not walking, we should sponsor because we want to make sure that they have the sponsorship to go along with the walk, the ride, and the run. And also let's sponsor that canine because they got more legs than we do. Last but not least, we have our reception and the baby shower the baby shower on June 4th at 2 p.m. We are hosting a welcome reception and baby shower for Pastor Stephen, Ava, and family. Please come and welcome our new pastor and family to Wyandotte First. In addition, we're combining with a baby shower for Ava. And if you'd like to contribute to the gift for baby Gloria Zoe, you may see Jan Ben Denberg and Carolyn Taylor, and please RSV, RSVP, and that's due by 
May 21st, which is next week. Please watch the video. Good morning again. Please rise and join us in singing.
You may be seated. Please pray with me. Loving God, we know your love because we have mothers. We thank you for the mothers who carried us in their wombs, nourishing, protecting, and bringing us into the world. We thank you for the mothers who did not give birth to us, yet loved us just the same. With gratitude, we remember their words of encouragement when we have felt unsure or afraid. We thank you for their kindness when the world has treated us unkindly. We thank you for their soft, comforting arms and the gentle way they kissed away our tears. We thank you that they protected us with the fierceness of a lioness protecting her cubs. We thank you for the times when they corrected us rather than letting us continue down wrong paths. Help us to live so that their investment in us might not be in vain. We honor our mothers with lives of service to you in the name of the risen Christ, for it is in his name we pray. Amen. Please rise and join us in our doxology. Praise and glory to the Father. Praise and glory to the Son. Praise and glory to the Spirit. Ever three and ever one. Praise and
Heavenly Father, thank you for the gifts that we are just received. We know that in this time of abundance, sometimes what we feel our gifts are is not enough, but we know that everything we give is enough for you, that what we give, you multiply and make do. We thank you, Lord, for providing opportunities for us to give and continue to give in all ways, shapes, and forms, and make small gifts multiply into larger gifts, and larger gifts triple and quadruple, so that we're able to serve you in the ways that make the most benefit to the most people. In your name we pray, amen. Happy Mother's Day. Moms from Wyandotte First were asked three questions, and here are some of their answers. Robin said something about uh, good advice, and the best advice I could come up with didn't have anything to do with parenting. It, it had to do with just living. But it came from a parenting class. When my kids were pretty small, we had a parenting class at church, and it was led by Dayton Law, who was a Catholic priest, and he was becoming a family pet family counselor. So anyway, this one day, it was a horrible day, and I lost my temper, and I yelled at my kids, and I came into the meeting, the class, beating myself up because of that. And Dayton took me by the shoulders, actually, and looked me in the eye and said, and you just discovered that you're not God which kind of took me back. But the thing about that is, you're not God, you're human. And if you're human, you're going to make some mistakes. And the best thing about that is, after you make mistakes, you can be forgiven. And that's the advice that has helped me for all the rest of my life, really. Okay. One piece of advice I was given about marriage was to never take advice. And I translated that to motherhood too because every family and every child is different. Um, so you can't really always accept advice from other people because it might not work for you. When I was pregnant with my first child, my mother gave me a little statue of an owl and it had a note with it that said, be a wise mother. So that was my advice. The piece of advice that I was given about motherhood is that you never stop worrying about them no matter how old they get, all the way into adulthood. The one piece of advice that was given to me to help me with motherhood was to take some time for myself. I was introduced to a program called MOPS, Mothers of Preschoolers, and it saved my life. I loved it. They took my kids away and I got adult time. It was wonderful. So some of the best advice I ever got about being a mother came from my mother-in-law, Marge Taylor, when my second child was born, and I had a five and a half year old at home, and I was scurrying around trying to get things done, and she told me, don't worry about the floors, you're always going to have floors to mop, you're always going to have dishes to wash, but she'll never get this time back. And she was absolutely right. So that's when you get down on the floor and you play with your little ones and you run outside and be goofy with them. So that's what I did. Well, the advice I got that I chose to ignore was wake your kids up, keep them on a schedule. I didn't believe that and I was really glad I didn't believe it because my kids were sleepers and it was great.
Well, I would say don't worry about the mess. There'll all be time to clean it up later. Back in 1956, when I first became a mother, no one gave me advice. I just had to kind of learn it on my own. Be true to yourself. It'll all come to you eventually. You'll learn about it on your own as you're going. I learned to be a mom through my mother, who was the rock of our family and our, our guiding light. She taught us to believe in Jesus and the rock of our faith and our family. She taught me to be patient and loving, even though chaos is going on around the house. You just give them a hug, give them love, and everything else will go on. Um, what, what did I learn from being a mother? Well, I learned that you do the best you can during that time with what you have and the knowledge that you have. So if I knew then what I knew now, then maybe I would have made some different decisions during that time. The lesson I learned about being a mom was the joy it gave me uh, to have my children around and to nurture them and make sure that they were responsible adults. Um, a lesson that I learned uh, for motherhood is always have a really good diaper bag with lots and lots of stuff in it. I learned that it's very painful to raise strong kids and have them not need you later. That's hard, but it's as it's supposed to be. They're not yours. They have their own lives. And it's not that I don't see my kids, but when your kids grow up, that's kind of painful in the best way, I guess. What I learned from being a mother is you have to have patience. You have to go without a little sleep. You have to learn not to worry about everything because things are gonna happen. But most of all, your love. I think the biggest lesson I learned is that with a child, Every, everything is a new experience. And as a mom, it's a new experience through them. And so we're all learning how to do things. And my lesson for me was to learn to forgive myself for the mistakes I may have made and that we all do the best we can when we're all growing and that The best part about being a mother was the unconditional love and the hugs and kisses and them trying to make me happy and me trying to make them happy. And the best part um, with being a mom is just seeing my two kids and what great friends they've become uh, with each other and just they support each other through thick and thin. And, um, and it's just great to see that wonderful relationship that they have. Um, for me, was watching them discover everything and learn everything and just all the joy of that. Uh, language and a butterfly and every single thing they discovered. That was very special for me and all the love they gave. And just the idea that you could comfort them and give someone so much love and they gave it right back instantly. That was the best. And then the best part that came with being a mom is the two human beings that I now know. The thing I've gotten out of being a mom is, of course, two children that I love and adore, but to actually see them grow into these amazing people and these amazing adults and just seeing how they're living their lives is just a blessing for me to see. So that's what I think Mother's Day is.
uh, that came with being a mom, I think, was celebrating all the little victories and accomplishments along the way, uh, as well as the big ones. So don't forget those little things that happen every day besides birthdays and other celebrations. And the best part that came with being a mom, I think, is I have two older sons now, and they come over and give me hugs and love me, and I get to have all of that love all of the time from my kids, and it's wonderful. I'm a, a mother of two adoptive kids. I'm a mother of two stepchildren that I call my bonus children, and I'm the mother of a dog. <laughs> so I would say that um, love is the most important thing to have for your family. Sometimes it's tough. I learned that I could say to my children when they'd done something I didn't approve of, that I didn't like what they had done, but I still loved them. I think patience is a virtue and a goal, um, which I haven't always reached, but it's something that's in progress with me. And um, I think you find out who you are when you're a mom. One of the very best things about having children is the joy and the pride that you, you can have when you watch every step of their growing up. When they're little, each accomplishment is a wonderful thing to enjoy. And you watch through all the childhood and teenage and young adult and adult ages, and it's just such a joy. You can't even imagine anything better. The other part of that is the joy and pride doesn't need to end. Uh, when you reach an old age like we have and your children are still there, they can give back the love and the care that you gave to them. And that's what we're enjoying now. It's really great. So how am I supposed to follow that? I mean, come on. Oh. How many times have we all heard this? I'm mom's favorite child, or she is so the favorite daughter, or oh, I'm the favorite son. Whenever anybody asked me, or if my kids asked me who my favorite child was, my answer was always Leo. <laughs> I loved my Leo, I miss him. So that's just a little mom humor. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all. As children, we need our parents to help guide and direct us as we go on the path from infancy to adulthood. We have no idea what we're doing, and we just expect that our parents are going to know what to do and they'll give us a wide berth, within limits of course, to safely test the waters on our own. We rely on our parents. On this Mother's Day, I'm hoping that you'll indulge me a little bit as I take some time to reflect on motherhood. The very broad description means that we are a parent to a child or children. There are many examples of mothers in the Bible to whom we can look for examples. There are, of course, there's Mary, mother of Jesus, Elizabeth, mother to John the Baptist, let's not forget Eve, mother to Cain and Abel, Sarah, who gave birth to Isaac in her old age, and then there's Naomi, mother-in-law to, mother to Ruth. In my life, I have had the privilege of not only having my awesome biological mom, but my awesome bonus mom as well. These two women have been stellar role models exhibiting kindness, compassion, strength, love, and devotion. I am truly blessed. And I also had the best mother-in-law on the planet, Marge Taylor. She was a great mom, and as I said, the best mother-in-law. I like to joke that I am one of the oldest members of this church, but it's actually true. I have been attending Wyandotte First since I was baptized nearly 60 years ago. 
I literally grew up in this church, which means that I've grown up with some credible examples of moms. When people talk about a church family, this is what it means to me. I can easily name several women in this church that I have considered to have been some of my church moms. And you saw one of them this morning, Carolyn Hudgens, comes first and foremost to my mind. Her gentle guidance, her words of wisdom, her, her, her humor, her devotion to God, all of it influenced me greatly. There were so many others, Doris Blackson, Elaine Baxter, Shirley Reynolds, Carolyn Taylor, Diane Coleman, Carolyn Wagoner, Betty Alt. There were also Mary Nelson and Polly Updike, women with quiet strength and faith so deep that you could just feel it in their presence. There are so many more that I'm sure that I'm forgetting right now, but I think you get the gist. I have spent my entire life encircled by strong, faithful women who freely gave of themselves, who loved me and who taught me what it means to live a life that Jesus instructed us to live. This community of moms, every single one of them brought value to my life. I'm a mom as well. I have two sons who are grown now, my son Michael who is 37 and Philip is 31. They have lives of their own now and they're doing very well. I've always also felt that I have lots of other children, you know, the kids that my kids grew up with and the kids that grew up in this church as well. I spent many hours in the nursery loving on and playing with the little ones. Matter of fact, I remember Robert used to build the blocks up and then push them back down. That was a lot of, it was a fun game. Spent many hours in the Sunday school rooms and I spent many, many hours as a youth group advisor. I've loved all of it and I have fond memories of my kids. It is my prayer that not only my own children, but the children that I helped raise in this church benefited from the lessons that I learned from the community of moms who helped to raise me. When you're a new mom, you hear all kinds of advice, whether it's solicited or unsolicited, tried and true, or just far out wacky. There are books, magazines, blog posts, websites, mommy and me groups, you name it, there's something out there for you. But there is one source that has stood the test of time, sage advice that has never failed. Can you guess what that is? Well, of course, it's the Bible. As I was preparing for this sermon, I used my study Bible, which has been highlighted, marked, circled, coated with stickies, all on some verses that are either my favorites or some that just simply spoke to me. One particular passage helped to keep me sane for over a year. When our oldest son, Michael, was 21 and he was in the army, he deployed to Iraq. Now, this was around, if he'll correct me, I'm sure, but I'm pretty sure it was around 2005, 2006. And if you can remember back then, it was a really scary time. I was a nervous wreck. The phone rings, I jump. Every time I came home from work, I was just convinced that the chaplain was going to be sitting in his car waiting for me when I came home. Here's the thing, though. I had a tendency to take that all on myself. I forgot what I was supposed to do. In Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9, it states, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So remember when I spoke on Easter Sunday about activating our faith with our words? 
Back in 2005 and 2006, I failed to follow that advice. I needed to submit my requests by prayer and by petition with thanksgiving to God. Once I finally did that, I felt a calming presence that allowed me to feel a little more control of my emotions. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I still worried, how could I not? But I finally remembered that God was there, waiting for me to lean on him. Jesus also reminded us that we should not worry, a lesson that for which I need constant reminders. In Matthew 25, or Matthew 6, verses 25 through 27, it states, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? That is a right-between-the-eyes reminder. Being a mom means that we're bound to worry about our kids at some point. Some of us worry more than others. What are we supposed to do when we worry? You know it. It's okay. You can say it. We submit our requests by prayer and petition with thanksgiving to God. Do we ever stop worrying about our kids, even when they're adults? Nope. So what does that mean? Oh, come on, you guys can say it. What do we have to keep doing? We submit our prayers by requests, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving to God. Being a mom means that we are part of a community of believers. We must teach our children, nurture them, and guide them on a path that leads them to Jesus Christ. We also must always, always, always pray for them. The community of believers isn't just limited to moms. After all, you don't have to be a mom, biological or otherwise, to be in a community that cares for the well-being of its children. That's a job for all of us. When we build something, we generally start with the foundation. The same is true when we build up or raise our children. One of the building blocks of our foundation is found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 72, or 37 through 40. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Going back again to my Easter Sunday message, activating our faith with our words, I believe that we can expand on that by activating our faith with our deeds, especially when our children see and hear us use our words and see us doing our deeds within the family dynamic and within the community. It is so easy today to fall into a mindset of hatred and anger. We fear the unknown. We sometimes are afraid to show and tell others about our faith. But our children need us to show them by example that we do not need to be afraid to proclaim that we believe in Jesus Christ. That we do not need to be afraid to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. Or to love your neighbor as yourself. If we show grace to others, the watchful eyes of our kids will notice and maybe just maybe, they will be inclined to extend grace to others as well. Just as when we teach a child to eat by using a spoon, we must also teach our children to love one another, to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts and with all of our souls and with all of our minds. Fear, anxiety, worry, that all comes with being a parent. I mean, heck, it comes with being human. But we must remember, number one, to submit our requests by prayer and petition with thanksgiving to God, to not worry, and finally, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, 
with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. These helps will allow us to teach, love, and encourage and guide our children and become, so that they can become on the path to followers of Christ. My prayer for all of you today is that you look at your family, your neighbor, and your community for children who can use some encouraging words or even just a silent prayer. Mom or not, we are all charged with loving our neighbors, including our children, as ourselves. Amen. Will you please stand for our closing Again, when someone tells you, I'm not a preacher, and they preach, do not be surprised if this person gets a call and you see them in diaconal clothing one day and they wonder why and how this happened. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. God's gifts and mercies have been lavished upon us with abundance. These gifts and mercies have been taken up by many, many faithful people. And this day, we celebrate 
to safety women who have used their gifts and shared God's mercies with us. May we, inspired by God's grace and the faithful women in our lives, go forth from this place, ready to serve, ready to listen, and ready to answer God's call. Amen. Thank you for coming. Have a great week.